Okay, so I think we can um, we can go ahead and make a start now. So welcome everyone to the to the next Data Science Under the Hood seminar in the CES series. Uh, so I think this is the third the third seminar for 2021. So for those that don't know me, my name is Chris Trivandi, and I'm one of the program directors in the Centre for Data Science. And it's a real pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, uh, Khan Leung. Um, so, so Khan completed her PhD in computer science, specialising in data science at QUT in 2019. And now Khan is working as a postdoc within the centre, uh, within the Applied Data Science Program. So Khan's research is concerned with dealing with multiple aspect data, which is data that is represented by multiple types of features or modalities or collected from multiple sources. So Khan has developed new techniques uh, to handle such data, including dimension reduction methods, uh, such as ma uh, matrix factorization, subspace learning and autoencoders. So today, Khan is going to tell us about manifold learning and dimension reduction. Uh, so actually, for those that uh, were at the AMC Winter School, this was actually uh, a, a pretty hot topic there, which was um, there's quite a lot of dimension reduction there. So I really look forward to seeing this presentation today. So over to you now, Khan. So Khan's going to talk for about uh, 40 to 45 minutes. And if you have any questions in the meantime, please don't hesitate to type them into the chat and then we can um, address those questions at the end of the presentation. So thanks very much, Khan. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for giving me the chance to present one of my research problems. And today I'm going to present about manifold learning and the incorporation to uh, an um, a dimensionality reduction technique to learn data features. This is the outlines of the talk. First, we will investigate um, manifold learning techniques, uh, the definition, approaches, and regularization. And next, we will see how um, we can incorporate manifold learning into a dimensionality reduction technique. And in here, uh, we'll focus on matrix factorization. And then we see how to apply manifold learning um, on multi-aspect or multimodal data. And note that in here, we use um, the problem we use in the presentation is the clustering problem. Motivation of manifold learning. The high dimensional data sets can be very difficult to visualize. Therefore, to add in visualization of the structure of a data set, the dimension must be reduced in some way. And that is when the, where the manifold learning comes in to learn the nonlinear structure embedded in the high dimensional data so that it can be easily visualized. In other words, manifold learning is an approach to nonlinear dimensionality reduction. And even though uh, manifold learning approaches can be both uh, supervised or unsupervised, most of the time it is unsupervised. There are uh, various uh, of manifold learning approaches, uh, but in here we only consider three types of very well-known manifold learning approaches that are isomap, locally linear embedding and agent Laplacian, Laplacian uh, which is also named at um, spectral embedding. Isomap is one of the earliest approaches to manifold learning and uh, it seeks for the low dimensional embedding which can maintain the geodesic distances between all points. For example, as in the figure show here, uh, show the data that form a spiral shape the solid light uh, determines the geodesic distances, distance between S1 and S2, while the dashed blue light uh, determines the uh, Euclidean distance between two points. So the steps of the algorithm include, first, we build the adjacency graph from high dimensional data points. This can be done using uh, pairwise similarity between points and neighborhood selection can be uh, KNN or epsilon neighbors. And then second step is to estimate the geodesic distances between any two points. This can be done using a shortest path algorithm. And then in the last step, we will run MDS, which is a method to find the subspace that can preserve the interpoint distances between uh, in the data. 
The second approach is local, locally linear embedding. This method seeks for a low dimensional projection of the data that can preserve the distances of data points within local hood area. So the idea is that um, the, the idea is that it assumes manifold is approximately linear when viewed locally. So the steps include first we select a neighborhood type can be a K man or epsilon, and also the neighborhood size, uh, which are K or epsilon. And second step is to characterize each data point at I as a linear combination of K nearest neighbors of it by optimizing the cost function given in here. So after this step, we obtain a matrix A, and where A is the weight matrix that show how to um, how to express, how to describe a data by its neighbors through a weight. So from the obtained uh, weight matrix A, the LLE seeks for an embedding that can preserve these ways. That's the second approach of manifold learning. In the third approach, uh, that's it called Laplacian agent map or spectral embedding. So in this method, um, it aims to obtain the an embedded map that preserves the local information. And to do that, it finds a low dimensional representation. To do that, it uses a spectral decomposition of the graph Laplacian. So the steps include build a graph from KNN or epsilon neighbors, and then calculate the affinity matrix A, and then the Laplacian matrix L, then solve the agent uh, vector problems at in here to obtain the, uh, the first M agent vector. And the first M agent vector will form the new embedded uh, space of the original space. And uh, this is also equivalent to minimizing the cost function here, which is very much similar to spectral um, learning. That is why this approach is called spectral embedding. A summary of manifold learning. We see that we have different manifold learning approach that can learn different types of data feature or can aim with different purposes. For example, isomap preserves all distances between points, where LLEs, LLE preserve local linear geometry and spectral embedding preserve the local distances. So these above manifold learning techniques help in detecting the underlying manifold structure by using the so-called uh, locally invariant idea, which means that any nearby points are, uh, are likely to have similar embeddings. So motivated by the development of manifold learning, as well as um, data feature learning techniques, such as based on matrix factorization, based on subspace learning, based on deep learning, um, an interesting direction here is to incorporate the manifold learning to these data representation uh, learning techniques. And the intuition behind is to boost the feature learning by ensuring the geometric um, structure of um, the data can be exploited and can be uh, considered and maintained. So next we will look at how manifold learning is incorporated to a um, matrix factorization based framework to learn data feature. We will consider for two types of data sets, traditional data set, when samples are represented by one type of features, for example, documents represented by terms or uh, images represented by pixels, and also data sets where samples are represented by multiple types of features, such as multi-sources or multimodal data. Let's have, uh, have a look at the well-known data feature learning using uh, matrix factorization. So this is an illustration of how data is mapped from high to low dimensional space using NMF. Uh, NMF will decompose the original high dimensional matrix S into two smaller matrices, H and V, such that the multiplication of HV is an approximate of X. So H and V here are very much smaller uh, size as compared to X. To solve this problem, we need to minimize the cost function with the constraint H and V are non-negative. And note in here that NMF is a well known for ability to learn past Bay, past Bay representation. 
This means that it can learn components of the data. For example, uh, for a face data set, NMF can learn uh, face components such as eyes, nose, and mouth, and so on. So after transformation using NMF, we achieve a matrix H, which we call the low dimensional um, representation of X. And H is very low dimensional, and H can retain the most important features of S. H is now can be used for any downstream task, such as clustering or, or classification. We can see that though NMF has significantly reduced the dimension of the data and can uh, even retain important features for the data, however, it cannot be able to maintain um, the original shape of the data. It fails to maintain the distances between data points when doing projection. So um, for example, in here, consider the red point, we see that the distances between uh, it and other points have been changed. And we don't want that. Uh, it would be perfect if we can maintain the distances between points. So because maintaining the distances between points um, is equivalent to maintaining the closeness or the similarities between points, which is important for many downstream tasks like clustering. So, uh, but fortunately, we have manifold learning, uh, which is a technique that can help uh, preserving the uh, shape of the data or the geometric structure of the data. Depending on the purpose of the downstream task, we can choose to use the appropriate manifold learning technique. So, um, and when combining NMF and manifold learning, we can find the low dimensional representation that can maintain the original distances between points and of course low dimensional. So uh, for clustering task, manifold learning algorithm aim to learn and preserve the geometric structure of data within local neighborhood area. For example, in the example shown in the figure, we don't need to preserve all distances. Learning and preserving distances within two neighborhood area here can be enough for clustering. So the manifold learning technique used in clustering is normally the one that learns and maintains the distances between points in the local neighborhood area causes show tendency to cluster. So this approach rely on building a KN or an uh, or epsilon neighbor graph to include the distances information in neighborhood area of data points. So the steps to do that including First, we, we, we use a K9 graph to, um, to construct an affinity matrix A, where um, A, RJ equal to the similarity of SI and HJ if SI and HJ are within the neighborhood area, or equal to zero if they are not. And then in the, in the next step, to ensure that this distance information um, encoded in the affinity matrix A, will be maintained during the learning process, a regularization term is added to the NMF loss function. And the term here, um, the trace term here is called manifold regularization, where L is the Laplacian matrix uh, and is calculated by this equation and D is the diagonal matrix. One may concern that, why do we have this trace term? So we consider two data points SI and HJ in the original space. And then we have HI and HJ, which are um, the representation of the two data points in the new low dimensional space. So if, uh, and we also have a, an affinity matrix A here, which encode the closeness of um, all data points in the original space. So A, A I, J is the closeness of SI and HJ. So if um, two data points SI and HJ is clo close in the original space or the distance between them is small, we want the distances between these two new embedded embeddings also small. To do this, we have to minimize this cost of uh, this uh, terms. So uh, the, the, the reason behind is that when we have the affinity value, is greater than zero, 
then all, all, all these two parts are closed in the original space. Minimizing this term, we also minimize the distance of HI and HA. Otherwise, if uh, the value affinity is zero, then the custom will not do anything. So for all data points, the custom will be uh, written like this. And um, we have a summarize um, of uh, all data points ij from one to n, and here is the number of data points and the distance and then the affinity matrix. So through some transformation, we arrive at this term. So in summary, uh, trace term here is called the manifold regularization and minimize this code function of com combination of both NMF and manifold regularization will ensure that any data points that are close in original space or within the local area in original space will be kept close in the new map space through NMF. A remark, some remarks in here, uh, any other manifold learning techniques can be used in NMF. And of course, any manifold learning techniques can be used in any data feature learning techniques, including subspace learning or deep learning. What we need to do is to learn the manifold of the original data and then incorporate the manifold term to ensure the new low dimensional space respect the intrinsic manifold. However, because all of the manifold learning uh, relies on building the KNN graph, which also uh, rely on choosing the parameter K or epsilon if we use um, epsilon neighborhood. So, but uh, this is a challenge because if we choose a small value of K, a smaller value of K than it should be, then we may miss some information. For example, in here, we may miss some um, neighborhood, um, uh, some neighboring uh, points of, of the data point that we are considered. Or if we choose um, a higher value of K than it should be, then uh, maybe we will uh, include some un use uh, unuseful um, neighbor points and, and will lead to incorrect manifold learned. So how to accurate learn the, um, how to accurate choose the neighborhood size and so that we can learn the manifold accurately is a very big question. So in, in, in we have um, to solve this problem, we have proposed a method that um, encode both close and far points um, and then more importantly, this proposed method can also mitigate the challenge of choosing the neighborhood size. This um, method is, uh, this, uh, this is the paper that published in ICDE 2019. And um, the aim is to learn the accurate geometric structure of the data uh, by considering both close and far points. The assumption here is that if closed data points should be kept closed in the new map space, far points should also be kept far. So the aim is to learn the accurate um, geometric structure. And to do that, we propose to construct the affinity matrix in a novel fashion, such that it um, completely encodes all distance information from a point to its nearest neighbors and to all its farthest points. And the newly constructed affinity matrix will then be formulated as a regularization term to ensure maintaining these distances during the uh, manifold learning process. And uh, for the purpose of keeping similar points close and dissimilar points far, we propose to build the new affinity matrix A and F um, as a combination of A N and A F, as in the first equation. AN encodes the, um, the information of closeness of the near points, and AN is constructed using K and K nearest neighbor as in the equation. And in particular, if um, HA is within K nearest neighbors of SI, affinity value will be the similarity of SI and HA. Otherwise, um, the value will be zero. And similarly, AF is the affinity matrix that encodes non-similarity um, points information, and it is built using Fafi's neighbor graph. And alpha, alpha and beta in the combination, in the equation, are the trade-off parameters. 
and note that we use a subtraction combination here. This is because um, while closed data points tend to be pulled closer, far data points should be forced to be far, and we will explain it um, more later. So um, another thing happened here, which is a possible um, a possibility of overlapped points where some data points may reside in the border and may belong to both nearest and farthest neighbor of a point. So in this case, we treat these points as neutral and it means that they are not close, they are not far, and we assign the affinity value zero for them. This is an example of um, construction of the new affinity matrix A and F. And for simplicity, we use binary weight and consider the points as one only. And um, so in figure A, we have the data point um, in original space. And in figure B, we have um, how we construct A and A F and A and F. So suppose that we choose K equal four and P equal two, then we have a nearest neighbor of S1, including F2, 3, 7, and 9, and um, a farthest neighbor of S1, including S6 and S8. And then we have um, AN and AF and AMF. And F is like this. And we see that when A and F uh, is equal to 1 here, it means that these two data points are close. And if when the value equal to minus one here, it means that's smaller than zero. Then these two data points are far. When the value is zero, these two data points are not far or not close. Now suppose that we choose k equal to six and p equal to five, then uh, we see that we have three data points at three, s four, and s five here uh, belong to both uh, near it and farthest set. Therefore, this value will be set to zero in A and F, as shown in the figure C here. And by using this technique, in case we accidentally uh, choosing a wrong value for parameter, it still can learn the meaningful affinity matrix for the data. So how to incorporate um, the new constructed affinity matrix to NMF? We calculate the newly lapidation matrix L and F um, like that. And DMF is the diagonal matrix that builds on calculated from A and F. And incorporate this new uh, lapidation matrix as a manifold regularization to NMF manifold. manifold uh, for, sorry, NMF framework. We will have uh, the custom as in here. This newly manifold regularization. Um, can be rewritten as this, and where we have um, uh, three cases in, may happen in here. If, if the affinity value of two data points S, I, and S, J are greater than zero, it means that these two data points are closed. So minimizing this term will minimize this term, which is to uh, force these two points are closed in the new map space. If the affinity value is smaller than zero, then or these two data points are far in the original space, then minimizing this term will force this point to be far. And if uh, these two points are not far, not close, um, affinity value equal to zero, then minimize this term will not uh, affect the distance between um, these two points. Here is the, um, uh, a Disney, Disney visualization of features learned on a uh, router dataset. We only select five classes for visualizing purpose. And in figure A is the feature visualization of um, data features learned by NMF and manifold learning when we only consider closed distances. And on the right-hand side in figure B, um, is the feature learned by NMF and manifold learning, where we consider both close and far points. And we see that um, class, we can see that class two, um, red point, and class four, black, black point, are very much interchanged in figure A, but they are learned better in figure B. And class one, blue point, also learned better in figure B. 
And we also apply this manifold on man on, on clustering problem. And when you apply this on, on clustering problem on, on real world data set, we can obtain from five to 15% of accuracy improvement. And this is a strong evidence of the effectiveness of the proposed near and far manifold learning when incorporated to NMF. And um, this newly constructed near far manifold learning can also be deployed to learn data features for any problems such as um, anomaly detection or classification or just simply uh, used to um, reduce the dimension of the data. Um, okay, so now manifold learning has been shown uh, providing an improvement in the learning performance on traditional one view data. So let's see how to utilize the manifold learning on multi-view data or multi-model data set effectively. So um, let's first consider um, the multi-aspect data. Um, with the search of the big data, then multi-aspect data is everywhere. Some example including um, maybe a data set that includes the news collected from multiple sources such as CNN, BBC, Reuters, or a multilingual data set where documents represented by different languages or a web search system where web pages represented by terms or by um, queries or by user, or a bowel cancer data set where data samples represented by gene expression, protein expression, and microRNA expression, or a social, social network where user represented in the relationship with other user or term and a lot more. So multi-aspect data, is known at, also known as multi-view or multi-model or multi-source data. And this is um, defined as the data set where data samples are considered with different perspectives or um, different uh, represented by different types of features. This data set is known to contain complementary and compatible information for learning process and that's why it can help learning more meaningful and realistic clustering solution um, for the data. So um, the problem definition of multi-view data is given as we have um, um, a multi-view data and we denote here X and suppose that we have NV view, then um, we will have NV matrices encoded um, data from NUV. And uh, N here is the number of samples and NV is the number of features of um, the V view. The number of samples um, on different views are the same, but the number of features of different view are different. Example we have, uh, for example, if we have a three source data set, then S1 may contain uh, the data from source one uh, or articles collected from Yahoo under the form of TF or TF IDF. S2 contains data from source two or S3 contain data from source three. When we apply NMF on multi-view data, um, uh, most of NMF-based multi-view data learning it work in the following manner. Um, because we have different matrices represented uh, data of different views. So we will uh, factorize different view to learn a feature embedded in each view. For example, we learn H1 from data view one and we learn H2 from data view two and so on. And in the later step um, called fusion or integration, we, we will learn the consensus latent feature matrix by um, doing a linear combination or by taking the average like uh, the equation below. So how do we apply an, an NMF, uh, manifold learning and NMF or multi-view data? So um, the common approach is to learn data points um, on each view, right? But, and then if we want to apply manifold learning on multi-view data, we may apply manifold on each view. So we learn how data points on each view um, are close together, and we try to um, maintain that distance when we map to a new low dimensional space. 
and the loss function is given at um, at here. So we have SV, SV here is the um, data view V and we decompose in using NMF and then we use this term to, to, um, learn, in, to learn and maintain the uh, manifold on each view. However, this approach uh, disregards the association relationship among views um, because even though data represented by multiple views, they should share the common uh, manifold structure. So learning and preserving manifold on each view separately like this may fail to respect the meaningful intrinsic manifold of the multi-view data. For example, we consider the figure showing here where figure A show the original data space and um, figure B and figure C are the um, figure B and figure C are the two view in the high dimensional space. Um, and then if we apply an NMF and manifold learning on, on these two views separately, we will learn the low dimensional space as shown in figure D and figure C. And uh, in the later step or fusion step, we will obtain the uh, data as shown in figure F. And we see that data five, uh, data point S5 um, in, in, in original space is very far from the other points. But when we learn like this, uh, because of the fusion step, the data for S5 now closer and like, which is not reflect the original data space. So instead of reserving and learning and preserving the manifold on different, different views separately, we uh, propose to um, learn uh, uh, to learn a consensus manifold for multi-view data and use that to guide the learning process. Yeah, and um, this is um, this this method has been proposed in this work, which um, is uh, published in uh, ICDE twenty twenty. This method is prized by um, the idea that there should exist a consensus manifold um, due to including the compatible and complementary information in multi view data, and uh, the consensus manifold here is a convex hole which can be a minimal convex set that contain all manifolds or a convex combi combination of all manifolds of all, of all views. So the consensus manifold can be seen as illustrated in the figure, which is the region that covers all manifold of all views as in figure B. So um, however, there are two things here. First, the consensus manifold can be too big as it cover all data points that close in any view. For example, two data points close in one view will be considered close in the consensus manifold, which, which may not be realistic. Second, to learn the consensus manifold, we need to turn on parameters for all view, which is um, a non-trivial task. And if we choose a wrong parameter, then we can lead to a very wrong consensus manifold as well. And then this leads us to infer that there should exist an optimal manifold of multi-view data that can be learned. And we define the optimal manifold as the most consent manifold, wherein data points belong to this optimal manifold if and only if they exist in all view manifold. And um, yeah, the optimal manifold is illustrated at in the figure shown here, which can be seen as um, the intersection part of only of all manifolds of all view. This means that all data points uh, belong to the optimal manifold if and only if they have to belong on all manifold folds of all views. And this manifold is constructed as um, uh, using also using Lab Lab Laplacian um, formulation. So uh, we first uh, construct a um, an affin op optimal affinity matrix. We name A of, and A of is defined as the um, by taking the minimum value affinity of all affinity matrix of all views, and then we have A of. 
and from a of we we build the 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 optimal Lap laplacian matrix l of and then we use this to incorporate to we use this to incorporate to an um, mmf a framework to learn the uh, to in, to 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 learn the um, optimal manifold which is the most consent manifold of the multi-view data and this optimal manifold um, has some advantages. First, it's accurate because only data points that close in all views will belong to optimal manifold, will be considered close in this manifold. And this is parameter free. And it learns the most consent to your matrix structure for the multi view data. So we apply this optimal manifold in the low rank representation of all views as given in the figure. And um, we know that um, apart from this optimal manifold learning uh, contribution, this work also have another contribution such that um, we build a two component model for multi-view data. And we also include uh, some other constraints so that we can learn um, more compatible and com uh, complementary information in the method. So um, the third, the, the second term, the rest term, in the objective function here, denoting the um, optimal manifold regularization that uh, in, encoded in the um, in the framework, and so that we can learn we can learn a multi view data that respect the uh, optimal the most consent manifold um, of the original data. And this is um, a feature visualization uh, of the uh, optimal manifold. On the left hand side, on on handwriting digit data set. So on the left hand side, we um, use NMF and consensus manifold. So the manifold that we, that the consensus manifold, which is the manifold that cover all manifolds of all views, um, and the accuracy obtained is um, eighty percent. And on the right hand side, we apply NMF and optimal manifold on handwriting digit and we obtain accuracy of 85%. Uh, we see that in the left-hand side, there are um, very much in between in this area where um, num uh, number four and number, it's very small, very hard to see. Um, there, uh, there are some interchanges in here, interchange in, in here, but um, by using the optimal manifold, um, these data points has been um, separated better. And this is the result when we apply uh, optimal manifold and NMF or multi view data um, for the clustering task. A summary So, NMF and manifold learning uh, framework is the effective method for both one view and multi view data, is because it solves the sparseness and high dimension. Other than that, it can learn and maintain the local structure of the data. And the more meaningful manifold is learned, the more meaningful and accurate feature can be achieved. In here, the more meaningful manifold can be um, a more informative manifold, like we, we consider both close and far point or the optimal manifold for multi view data. Uh, however, various gaps can be further exploited regarding learning the meaningful and accurate uh, consensus manifold for multi view data. Current work um, in our group, including first, uh, we develop, um, we are developing a deep matrix factorization based method where we factorize the original matrix through multiple layers. And the idea is to learn the nonlinear interaction among features of the data. However, when we apply the manifold learning on this architecture, an interesting question is that. Um, should the manifold be shared among layers or we should learn different manifolds for different layers? And that we are working on that. And uh, second, uh, how to apply manifold learning for transfer learning problem. So suppose we have two subsets, one with labels and uh, other with no label. So how we can use um, manifold learning in a way that we can transfer knowledge of local geometry from labeled to unlabeled set. Third, how to learn more informative um, consensus manifold for multi view data. Recall that we have uh, built the optimal manifold um, where it encodes data points that are close in all view. 
though this manifold is parameter free and correct, but it may be too small, especially for data set that with many views. So if data for even though uh, they are close in majority of views, uh, they still not be considered close in the optimal manifold. So therefore, we would like to learn a more comprehensive consensus manifold for multi-view data. Uh, and last, we do transfer. We are doing transfer learning um, on NMF for social social media data. So that are some current work that I and um, our group are doing. And this is our group and our contest information. Thank you. And if you have any question. Thank you very much, Khan. That was a really nice presentation, a really comprehensive um, overview of manifold learning and also um, matrix uh, factorization. Um, so as Khan said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to type them into the chat. So in the meantime, we do have we do have one question in the chat. So I think this was related to the um, to when you're doing the K nearest neighbors stuff. So the question is, what about points that are in the true manifold? What if those ones are farther from each other uh, compared to um, Cartesian R3? So I guess in the Euclidean space. Yeah, that's a good question. Quite kind of similar to. Uh, the idea of the isomap, like instead of consider the Euclidean distance, we consider the geodesic distances. Yeah. Mm. But when you when you're constructing the geodesic distances, you still you you still initially consider Euclidean distance, right? Because you do k, k nearest neighbors in terms of Euclidean distance to help you then construct the geodesic distance. Yes. So yeah, basically yeah. And so, yeah. So the idea is that if you only, with the K nearest neighbor, you're only looking very locally, isn't it? So if something is close in Euclidean space, if it's, you would sort of hope that it's close on the manifold as well. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Uh, so another related question has come in. So the idea works when there is a dense manifold. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of problem related to manifold learning. Actually, it's, it's a yeah, it's a big problem and it's a tri not trivial problem. So, um, um, dense manifold. What do you mean? Do you mean like um, a manifold where we have a lot of data points close to each other? Oh, so uh, there's a clarification in the chat there. Can you see that, Khan? Meaning the, there are closed voice in the manifold space than in Euclidean space. This is a very comprehensive question. I'm not quite sure, sorry. <laughs> 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 no, it sounds like a very difficult problem. Yeah, difficult problem because um, the main, the, like, my focus is how to apply manifold with the NMF and multi view data. I know that is manifold learning is a very big problem and a lot of interesting things there. But, like, we, I'm open to discuss, like, face to face. <laughs> yeah, crazy thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I was sort of wondering, so why do you need the non-negative ma uh, matrix factorization in the first place? So why not just what why, why not just use the yeah. dimension reduction techniques like the ones that you talked about at the start? Why not just apply them to the data? Why do you need the matrix factorization in there? So how does that help, I guess? Yeah, so uh, basically the manifold learning have with dimensionality reduction already mm -hmm. yeah but the main aim is to preserve the 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 geometric structure the shape for visualization purpose while nmf is new to learn data feature right so yeah so when we combine these two we hope that we can learn data feature where we can maintain the geometric structure of the data. Mm -hmm. yes. okay 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 that makes sense 
And also you mentioned another method in there, at least in one of the graphs, is t -SNE. You didn't actually talk about that one though. So what, what does t -SNE do? So t -SNE is based on um, another distribution. Uh, yeah, yeah, we only, I, I only use that for the, for the visualization purpose. Yeah, in this presentation. Okay, do, do you know how that, how that method works I, at all? Or? Yeah. Uh, no, it's hard to. So is it just another, is it like a clustering type method? Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so I think we don't, we don't have any more, more questions there. So I think we can finish up for, that, for today. So please join me everyone in thanking Khan again for a really great presentation. And um, yeah, so thanks again, Khan, and uh, look forward to seeing you all again for the next Data Science and the Lid Seminar. Yeah. Bye, for, bye for now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Simon. Thank you.